Hi there, Edge of VFX here. My most recent behind the scenes for my short film got pretty popular, which means people love making stuff in Blender, I guess. However, there was one recurring suggestion throughout all the comments section on said video. Tutorials. Make, Make a, a tutorial, tutorial sci-fi tutorial. tutorial. Can, Can we get nice to have upload, upload tutorials, tutorials too? too. Alright, fine. I give up. Here's a tutorial for motion tracking in Blender, which is, in my amateur opinion, a very underrated, if not the most underrated, part of Blender that I feel doesn't get talked about enough. Now coming into Blender, I made a few questionable motion track shots, but I got better, and now that I have a PC, and I've made my all-digital short film, uh, why not? Now to start, we need footage. I'll show you an example of the footage I've shot in preparation for this tutorial, which was shot in 30fps on my iPhone SE from 2020 which isn't the best, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Now before I bring it into Blender, I also scan the environment all around me with the app Street View by Google, which is being shut down after March 21st, 2023. So if you're watching after then, figure it out. Nah, I'm kidding, the features will migrate to Google Maps. I took a 360 degree photo to light the 3D models that I will be placing in the footage to be accurate to where I film the footage. I'll show you how to set this up soon. So I start this process by booting up my PC, obviously. I recently had to get a new power supply for her, but don't ask, she's holding up very well. I launched the latest version of Blender and get going. Now I'm not sure how many other versions this exact tutorial will work with, but if you have 2.8 or later, you should be fine. And if you don't have 2.8 or later, I am a little concerned for your health. So first I open up the motion tracking tab and import my footage. I then select set scene frames, prefetch to load in the footage and be faster, and then depending on the shot, you usually have to select perspective, location, and or rotation of scale, or just location if you have no depth in your camera movement. Now I think for me, perspective is gonna work best, so I use that and then select detect features, which will automatically select points throughout my footage and track them. But what's the use of this information if you don't know why you're doing what you do? Well, these points help the program look at your scene and its movement and determine, based on these points, moving in the 3D space, how the floor of the actual scene will pair with the digital floor. If you see points attached to something that is moving or not static, go ahead and delete them. You can also use the Clean Tracks feature to filter tracks by the amount of pixel error they contain. Once you press Solve Camera Motion in the tab below, you can move on to the next step, which is setting up your digital camera. At the top of this tab, select Setup Tracking Scene and you will see both your points as well as your camera in the digital space. Now you can adjust this to line up with your digital floor or whatever, and once you think it looks good with the default cube lined up, you can add your own model. Now I honestly didn't know what to do with this shot until an idea struck me during a voice chat with the renowned Arc Music, who makes all the music you're hearing in this video. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. This is, this is tough. Oh, oh, oh! Brainstorm. Brain, uh, 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 Eureka. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Uh, Alright, I have an idea, I have an idea. So I, I decided to make a missile. Just as a disclaimer, I do not own missiles or have access to nuclear warheads, but if I did, I'd probably use them on you know. So I based models loosely off of nuclear warheads and missiles. Unfortunately, I could not photo scan them. Although I did reach out to the president of the United States, he left me on red, just like my eggs. Designing the launch bay was a bit of a hassle, but I got the rest of the bunker to be underneath both the shadow catcher layer, which can be set up under the transform properties, as well as the floor layer blender sets up for you when you create your track scene. I then set up the lighting with the 360 degree image I took earlier by saving it to my photos and then importing it onto my computer and then setting that image up by plugging it into the environment node. So what do you call a nuke that was launched on the 4th of July? The wrong firework. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So for this next shot, I mo did mostly the same thing except the shadow catcher was shaped in the way the table storage thingy my family keeps our pool toys in was. So the shadows are more accurate where the rifle hangs over the edge of the These rifles used are actually the same rifles I use in my short film which is up now and you should check it out if you haven't already. It's made entirely in Blender with the compositing, editing, and etc. done in After Effects and Premiere Pro. So after doing this, the next step is to send some screenshots over to my Discord server, link in the description by the way, and get some feedback. So after tracking this out and rendering it, I realized I have the markers I used to track my footage, uh, and they needed to be painted out. Now my smooth brain thought two dumb things. One, wow, these markers can definitely be done by AI in the After Effects perfectly. And two, this will be fast. I'll do the ones that aren't even in the shot first, so I can waste my time. The AI didn't work perfectly, but after realizing I did all the markers that weren't in the shot, I was, to say the least, disappointed in myself. This is why you'll never be better than just joshing. But I got rid of the two that were there, and it looks pretty good with some grain correction and color grading. I'm proud of these shots, and something I've failed to mention up until now is the smoke simulation I did for the missile launching, which I rendered after making the script, so I have no idea how it turned out. Let me know in the comments below. Also, what do you call a... <laughs> A well-planned microwave. A tactical nuke.
I also want to let you know that I'm working on a big commission for someone that I'm very excited to show you all soon. It's a work in progress, but I'll have more news on it soon. That about wraps this up. I'm honestly very happy with how these shots turned out, and if you have any questions about how I made them or anything else, feel free to ask in the comment section below or even on the Discord server, which is also linked below. A huge shout out to Arc Music, as always, who provides my music for this video and the rest, and check out some of the, my recent videos if you haven't already, such as my short film right here, as well as my behind the scenes for it here. After making the script, so I have no idea how it turns out, um, it was a advanced. I didn't script this part. Oops.